hey welcome once again to the third and the final part of aws lambda in-depth series here i'm going to talk about uh, the next part that i'm going to talk would be a concurrency it's one of the most important parts of aws lambda service so here a concurrency basically denotes the number of active instances of your function which is available to uh, uh, accept the traffic or handle the traffic at a given point of time okay so con by concurrency basically would be the number of instances available to cater the traffic okay and there are uh, three ways basically three things three terms that i would like to tell you about first is an unreserved concurrency uh, another is a reserved concurrency another is a provisioned concurrency okay but before understanding that let's go through the slide further so reserve concurrency would basically denote the maximum number of concurrent instances for the function so that no other function can use that concurrency so you have created a function in the console uh, or via console or it or uh, uh, cli or anything so you want that uh, maximum of 15 instances would be allowed so by default uh, 15 instances of your function would be you are allowing that okay so in a specific region like for example in the north virginia or us east one you can have a maximum in per region you can have a maximum on that region you can have a limit of 1000 uh, concurrency for your function altogether okay so that means if any uh, so uh, as a whole there can be uh, say for example you have 10 functions and 10 functions itself among them they are uh, you haven't reserved anything so that would be the any concurrency which is not reserved and the number of insta active instances would be taken from that default of 1000 pool would be termed as unreserved concurrency you are not setting any limits to your function so if your function gets a request of 800 or 700 requests 700 such instances or uh, uh, would be uh, spawn would be available to get the traffic totally depending upon the code that you have written definitely so and uh, in case you are setting any uh, concurrency limit in that case which is here that is reserve concurrency you are setting a maximum bar or a limit beyond that your function would return a 429 error which is throttling error okay let's understand the calculations further so reserve concurrency should be less than or equal to the unreserved concurrency minus 100 because in us is one if for example if the concurrency limit is 1000 then for for setting under for setting a maximum reserve concurrency that for one specific function you can have is 100 uh, 1000 minus 100 that's 900 because 100 by default would be taken as unreserved pool so that other functions say function one function two three they would be utilizing that specific uh, pool once a concurrency limit is breached or concurrency limit has been uh, surpassed your function invocation would result in a 4 to 9 throttling error and in that case you have to wait further and you have to follow jittering and exponential back off model in order to invoke further okay but by uh, jittering means uh, uneven uh, invocation of function maybe not frequently but waiting for some times and then again try to invoke and that wait would be gradually increasing these are all error handling and retry patterns that are that is available in the AWS public documentation you can definitely go through. Coming to the provision concurrency part. Provision concurrency would denote I want, for example, I, I have a function and I want that five instances of uh, that function is always available for traffic handling. OK, so in that case, you are provisioning uh, the number that always uh, you want certain number of your functions are available for the traffic mind it that it comes uh, at, a, at an extra cost definitely and uh, here I would give you a brief idea of how uh, things take place whenever uh, first request is received by the AWS Lambda service it provisions the function but creating the function the entire time that would be taken initially would be turned as a pole start and uh, this entire module here, if you see the blue part and the embo part here, the blue part basically denotes the cold start where the source code or the code that you have written, the deployment package gets ready and your function, you are bringing up the function and making the environment ready. And invocation one, what happens? Your handler code 
and initialization everything gets ready for the traffic that's the invocation time it's taking place so in case of unreserved concurrency what happens every time in case uh, your function has not been hit for a while your environment would be destroyed when the request would come then excess time would be taken up for this uh, cold start in order to avoid that avoid any latencies or delay in the e in the even processing you are you can uh, provision such concurrencies in order to remediate in order to remove the cold start from the flow okay i hope this is clear if you have any questions do not uh, forget to uh, type in a comment in the comment section i would be uh, ready to answer from that next part i'm going to talk about is aws lambda logs and metrics lambda basically has an integration with cloudwatch service which stores the logs and all the matrices for your function so your lambda function would have certain should have uh, uh, sufficient permission the execution role should have in order to push the logs in the metrics and you will have the this specific location if you see on the screen aws uh, slash aws slash lambda followed by the function name there you would be uh, getting your all lambda logs available the execution logs talking about the metric there are different types of metric you could see on the screen but what's but under the different types i have selected certain metrics which are important in order to troubleshoot any scenarios okay and in that case for invocation metric type there are invocations errors throttles any provision concurrency invocations and the provision concurrency spillover invocations so these are different metrics invocations denotes the total number of requests received and errors would denote the number of failed requests okay uh, the, the failed in the, the number of times your function failed to execute successfully and throttling would definitely the number the number of times your function got throttled and provision concurrency matrices are definitely related to the provision con uh, provision concurrency once you start working you can definitely refer to the public documentations available okay coming to the performance one is the duration the due the time that is taken by your lambda function to process an entire request okay and another part is the iterator range in case you are using uh, the kinesis data stream uh, service as a source of your function that means the event source sometimes it may happen that your function is unable to read the data from the shards efficiently and at that point of time your iterator age is the metric that gets increased that it 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 imparts it basically shows the delay uh, that the delay that your function is facing with processing the data you can think of different ways in order to remediate that by increasing the shard or increasing the memory of your function and proper tuning would be required in order to tackle this coming to concurrencies concurrent execution provision concurrent executions unreserved executions provision concurrency uh, utilizations these are the different metrics that are available for look okay next slide i would be talking about the lambda states and networking so whenever you are creating a lambda function so state is basically something the lambda service uh, is tracking uh, as a part of it's basically a life cycle for the function creation and updation as well so whenever you create a function the first state that comes up it's in the pending state so once the once the function is uh, ready so it goes to the active state and once uh, for uh, for the uh, processing of the requests in case it's failed it directly goes to this failed state now once uh, your function doesn't get invoked further directly that there, 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 there can be a chance that from pending to inactive state it goes okay so for once it is in the active states for while processing the uh, uh, the functions uh, different uh, the request that it receives once that is done it can go to the inactive state and from inactive state again it would go to the pending state whenever a request receives okay coming to the update part whenever you are updating your function then the last update status you have to follow it should be in, in progress and once that is done it is in the successful uh, it can be either in the successful or failed state depending upon the function changes that were made or the configuration changes that were made okay lambda states is important 
because different uh, infrastructure support tool like Terraform and cloud formations, uh, the generally what happens when a, once a function is created, suddenly you may try to you, uh, you may try to invoke that function, but uh, there can be a certain delay. Your fun my function might not be ready because different. Uh, in case you have placed the function in a VPC, there would be different underlying activities that would go on and take certain amount of time. Coming to the networking part, you would get an understanding over here. So this is the serv Lambda service VPC that has a VPC to VPC NAT connectivity to that say for example this is the customer VPC okay and in the customer VPC what happens in case you have placed the Lambda service your Lambda function in a private subnet okay so networking part I would be preparing another series of videos in order to make you understand it so as of now remember that a VPC would be a certain range of IPs that you are assigning it to be a part of your private network. And in that private network, you can further break that network into multiple subparts. One can be a public subnet, another would be a private subnet. Public subnet is that that has a route to the internet or public resources via internet gateway. And a private subnet would be one that doesn't have any route to internet gateway. So any resources that is placed in a private subnet that requires an internet access would need to have a route in its route table to internet that is 0.0.0 .0 .0 slash 0 via a NAT gateway which is placed in the public subnet of the same VPC as uh, you can you could see in the screen. So whenever you are placing a lambda function to a, a VPC so multiple function you can place but it ultimately the lambda service would do what create one ENI and place it in the private subnet depending upon the subnets that you have selected during the uh, VPC configuration of the function and the traffic would flow in case the, your function requires an internet access and also simultaneously it requires uh, accessing other private resources say for example any memcache uh, any uh, redis or any other cluster that is placed in the same subnet or you get out a different subnet it can actually interact with that as seen in the diagram okay so coming to eni definitely uh, it's a logical uh, networking component that represents a virtual network card for for networking purpose completely okay that's all from this uh, lambda states and networking part i would come back to the final conclusion the keynotes that what we have discussed is what is AWS Lambda service. There are different terminologies that we have discussed, invocation types, important parts coming to event source mapping, event filtering, cloud watch logs and metrics, Lambda states, one part that I have missed uh, mentioning over here, which is concurrency, and also networking. That's all from my end. I hope you like it. And please like, share, and subscribe for more information related to these important services. Thanks for watching. Bye.